Hi everyone, welcome to another Autodesk screencast by Zahn Ta of Repo Products. This screencast will showcase how to create a custom curtain panel for use inside a curtain wall. If you like this video and would like to see more, please search for Zahn Ta or VAR2016. Thanks for watching. Here I am in Revit 2017. Under the Recent Files window, I'll click New under Families, and we can pick Curtain Wall Panel. And it's a Revit family template file. We'll click Open. And you'll notice in the Reference Plan Floor Plan view, we have the exterior side, interior side, a center reference plane that defines the origin is checked, and then three reference planes that define the left, the right, and the center. The center is also defined origins, which means this is the center point and the insertion point of that curtain panel. We head over to the exterior elevation view and type in ZA to zoom all to fit. You'll notice that you have a top reference plane as well to help you define the top of that panel. Now, <clears throat> we can do something very, very simple. For example, creating a rectangular extrusion and just placing it like so on that plane, aligning and locking the edges, if you will. and heading over to the exterior elevation to finish the command, you can see that that panel is created. We can pull it up and align and lock it for both top and bottom and left and right so they know their positioning. If you look at the 3D view, it's nothing more than a simple rectangular panel. That's very simple. That's easy to work with, easy to do for a cur custom curtain panel. However, you know, you may want to get fancier. So for example, we know that this reference plane is the center reference plane. We can go ahead and create additional reference planes. We'll do a pick method, and we'll say 1 half inch. <clears throat> we'll do this. And then we can go ahead and create a interesting profile sketch, if you will, um, for our extrusion. So let's say we start the extrusion command. and We'll use the pick method, lock that edge, pick this edge, lock that, pick this one, lock it, pick this one, lock it. And then we can get into customizing that um, profile. So let's say, for example, we want it to go out to here, like that. And we want it to go down here, like that. We can clean it up by using trim to corner. And then we can use split with deleting inner segment, like so, and like so. Now, if I want to customize and control these thicknesses, I can by using additional reference planes. Um, so let's finish the sketch for now and create the reference planes out here, outside of the sketch environment. The reason I do this is because if I were to create the reference planes within the sketch environment that I was in earlier, those reference planes will disappear when I'm out of the sketch environment. So let's create the reference planes out here in the main environment first. So we'll pull these down. And I kind of like to keep things aligned properly when you're drawing because it affects the way the design looks at the end of the day, and it just helps to keep things clean and simple. I'm going to go ahead and dimension from reference plane to reference plane and make them equal. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side and make them equal. Now I can go back to my sketch and edit that extrusion and either move this or I can just select it and pull these arrows and align and lock those edges to the new reference planes. Since they kind of jut out on both ends, I can go ahead and create reference planes as well for how much it uh, extends, if you will.
and let's go ahead and dimension this to this to this make it equal and then this to this and assign this as a parameter calling it panel thickness so we can adjust that <clears throat> we can go ahead and dimension from here to here as well and make that a one inch locking dimension so it always is one inch thick same thing on this side we'll set this to a one inch dimension and we'll lock it then we can select that plane and pull it so it touches that reference plane and locks it I'll shade it so you can kind of see what you're looking at and then lastly um, if we change the panel thickness to say two inches does it flex accordingly yes it does so we'll save this as a new family and we'll call it custom curtain panel hit save and now we can use it in a project so we'll start a new project architectural is fine <clears throat> excuse me and start the wall command go down here and let's just use the storefront it's easy to work with we'll toggle back to our family and load it into the project now that it's loaded let's look at this in 3d let's look at this particular storefront go to its type properties you'll see curtain panel here click inside and you'll see you have the custom one hit apply hit ok and now you can see it's being used ah we forgot we need to make sure we adjust vertically as well so let's toggle back to the family and head to the exterior front elevation view select it pull it up and lock it on also the bottom a lot of people forget the bottom so now that that's finished looking at it in 3d it looks like this we'll save it and let's go ahead and assign material to it so let's go here create a new material call it panel material and then go to the family types window and assign a particular material let's use glass for now <clears throat> hit apply hit ok and save it just load it back into the project and overwrite the one that we have we'll look at it in 3d there you go this is how you create a custom curtain panel for use in a curtain wall panel design now obviously um, the mullions here um, give a little bit of makes it a little hard to see but you get the point and that's how you create a custom curtain panel thank you very much